Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if banished Naruto becomes emperor and married with Mei, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. How long has it been going on now, an hour dot two maybe a day. I guess it doesn't matter, I just can't believe it. After everything I'm still just a fox to them, my team Sasuke brought him back, and now I'm here. Thought the blonde boy as he looked down at his own mud splattered feet, his orange pants already in ribbons from the fights only a day previously. He hadn't had a second set to change into at the hospital, luckily he had another black shirt to cover up the scars now decorating his chest, but his orange pants were still a wreck. The fights, oh right the mission first that big guy hum choji sure showed him, and then that one girl and the bone guy I guess granny was able to help Lee after all man, and it turns out Gara showed up, I guess it's a good thing I brought granny back. She's pretty cool when she's not drinking. These thoughts brought the faintest of smiles to his face, even as tears brimmed at the corner of his eyes, trailing down over the bandages upon his face, to drip silently down to the floor, even as the figures around him continued to debate, their voices growing louder with each moment as the battle over him intensified. Everyone we all made it back and now now this, I didn't even get to say goodbye. I dot I don't want to leave them dot everyone I don't want to leave shuddered the boy, as these thoughts continued to swirl around in his mind, his face contorted into a look of pain, even as his body throbbed from the wounds that had only been patched hours before. As the boy's thoughts continued their assault above him upon a raised platform, a blonde-haired woman was slamming her fist once again into the stone structure, sending a web of cracks down it, as she yelled again at the assembled group before her. I don't care if you think it's too dangerous Kanoha does not sell out one of our own roared Tsunade, her brown eyes flashing dangerously as she glared around at the council before her, each steadying themselves against the impressive waves of killing intent washing off of her. This is not a matter of selling anyone out Tsunade and you know it. Kanoha has suffered too many losses after the invasion, two of that group infiltrated us without effort and drove off our elite without even straining themselves. Called an elderly looking man, his spectacles face drawn into a hard look. Beside him sat his fellow an elderly woman, her own brown worn with age, even as she steeled herself to speak, drawing the Hokage's eyes to her. Amura is correct Hokage-sama. The matter is simple, the boy is a target, one for an enemy we cannot match. If we try, how many do you think will die for this boy? Asked the elderly woman as Tsunade's eyes narrowed upon her. And if you were the target Kaharu? Fired back Tsunade as the elderly woman nodded, replying in a firm tone. Then I would leave. A shinobi's life is to protect the village. If I stay, I will put my home and family in danger. I have taken missions that could have meant my death before Hokage-sama, if it is for Kanoha I have no fear of death," replied the elder Kaharu as an angry growl drew a few eyes up to where a feral woman sat her figures digging lightly into sleeves of her shirt as she fought to keep herself in check. Tsum started Tsunade before the matriarch of the Inuzuka clan spoke her tone harshly, as if trying to bite back her own words. Enough Hokage-sama, this isn't easy for a lot of us, but it has to be done spoke Tsum as Tsunade's eyes narrowed upon the woman. So you'd sell him out to Akatsuki. Called Tsunade's as Tsum jerked her eyes away from the woman, as well as the blonde boy standing just before her. If that's what has to be done to protect the village, yes. I won't lose my clan to that fox. Spoke Tsum a mix of anger and self-loathing, dripping from every work she spoke as flashes of her injured son flashed past her eyes. At her words Tsunade turned to the room, seeing that not one of the council stood with her, not one. A few like Tsum could not meet her eyes, while others showed open contempt for the boy down below, but all were united upon this decision. This is not the first time a shinobi has died or given their life for the village Hokage-sama. My brother also gave his life for our safety, we ask no more of the boy than we would any other of our village. We are not killing the boy, he may survive, how is that any more a risk than any other mission? Spoke a stoic tone belonging to Hiyashi Hayuga as he nodded towards where Naruto stood. You know damn well this isn't a mission. One genin against a gang of S-class criminals, and you want to pretend saying it's a mission makes it alright. Snarled Tsunade as another voice spoke. Okajama, the council is in agreement, we can't order him as a shinobi, but we can remove him from the shinobi ranks. If we do this he dies in disgrace, and at least let his name be put upon the memorial stone for what he is sacrificing. Spoke Kimura as he looked around the council receiving a few nods, while others simply scoffed. Don't you dare try to act like you're doing this for him. Yelled Tsunade as above Tsuma scarred man's side, rubbing his head as he muttered to himself before speaking. No Hokage-sama, we're doing this for the village, what we have to do to protect our home. Every shinobi must be ready to lay down their lives for their home and their comrades. The boy is a target, one we cannot protect, one that we cannot prepare, and one that could become a bigger threat to the village if he were to stay. Inchuriki are dangerous enough just to have inside one's forces, and now he is a target on top of this, Hokage-sama the fox is not worth this. 
finished Shikaku, as beside him Chimza Akamichi and Inoichi Yamanaka, nodded in agreement with their longtime partner. His name is Naruto Uzumaki you nonsenses and I won't just sit by and let you throw him to the wolves. Yelled back Tsunade pointing down to Naruto, with his one arm in a sling, his body still littered with medical wrappings, even as a bandaged man rose his action, drawing several eyes as spoke. Very well Hokage-sama, the council has made its decision, Naruto Uzumaki, genin of Konoha, will be officially stripped of his rank, after his chakra is sealed and banished for no less than five years, or until our forces have returned to their full strength for the greater safety of the village. All Danzo as the council nodded, Tsunade started to yell, but stopped as she saw the boy below her stiffen at the council's decision. Naruto whispered Tsunade as the blonde looked up at her, his blue eyes somehow dimmer as the trails from his tears drew small damp lines down his whisker cheeks. The boy will report to the council tomorrow to have the sealing performed, failure to arrive will be. Started Danzo as another voice cut him off. Enough. I may not be able to stop you from doing this, but I won't let you endanger him anymore. Called a white-haired man as he stepped forwards glaring at Danzo who gave the figure a steady look. As Jureya spoke Naruto felt a small twinge in his stomach as what sounded like a whisper in his mind started to speak. However before it could gain voice Jureya had already moved forward speaking as he did. Jureya sensei whispered Naruto as the toad sage gave him a small smile patting him on his head before looking back at Danzo, his eyes narrowed. The seal is too delicate to have a novice like you messing with it. Started the sage as Danzo nodded, turning fully to face the sage. Hi, and as Konoha's sealing expert I expect you to do the work yourself Jureya, now that you are here it can be done immediately. Spoke Danzo as Jureya bit back a curse looking up to Tsunade who now looks stricken. Nonsense, you think I'll just nod and smile while you do this. Spat Jureya as he laid a hand gently upon Naruto's shoulder pulling the boy closer to him. Above him the fight in Tsunade finally gave out as she slumped into her chair gazing around at the council as Danzo continued to speak. No Jureya, I expect you to honor your commitment to Konoha and this council. This is the will of Konoha and you will follow it through. Finished Danzo as Jureya glared before looking away as above him, Tsunade gave the room one final look before speaking, her voice breaking slightly as she struggled to keep from sobbing. Jureya come to my office na Naruto you as well this council is dismissed. Finished the blonde as the gathered shinobi and elders nodded, pushing themselves up and slowly filing out of the room, none looking down at the blonde boy who stood silently beside the two sages of Konoha. Zero zero, those nonsenses. Roared Tsunade as she flung her desk into a wall, smashing the wooden frame more than a foot into the solid stone and causing an anbu to try and dive out of their hiding spot, only to be caught by the Hokage's chair that impacted the masked figures with a loud crunch. As the anbu flopped to the office floor unconscious Naruto and Jureya moved a bit further from the raging blonde, both fearful of getting caught up in her rage. Shizun. Called Tsunade as her assistant standing just a foot or so behind her scanned the room before nodding. That was the last one, Lady Tsunade. Spoke the black-haired woman as Tsunade smirked looking around at the wreck of an office where the five hidden Anbu now lay unconscious, each accidentally hit by one of her projectiles in the course of her fit. Well that was effective. Chuckled Jureya moving over to prod one Anbu lightly with a foot before turning to see Shizun already dropping to kneel beside Naruto, pulling the boy into an embrace as Tsunade focused upon the sage. This is not a time for jokes Jureya, we need to plan this out so that the council isn't getting their way with this. What were you thinking, if you hadn't spoken up they wouldn't have been able to seal him. That was our last hope. Spat Tsunade as Jureya raised his hand defensively. Tsunade, we both know they would have tried anyway, and Naruto would have been in even more trouble, I didn't have a choice. Called Jureya as he lowered his hands turning to look down at Naruto who blinked up at him. I'm sorry kid, that's all I could do. Spoke the sage as Naruto nodded slightly looking around to Tsunade. It's okay sensei you both did everything you could, but why are they doing this? Asked Naruto in a slightly odd tone as he looked up to Tsunade, who felt her own eyes brimming with tears as she moved over to the blonde team. As she reached him she pulled him close into a hug looking up to Jiraiya, her eyes burning with silent rage as she spoke. I don't know Naruto. I don't know if they've been planning this. I don't know how long but they've been planning this, but we won't let them win I promise you. We'll protect you Naruto, we'll train you, and we won't let the council stop us. Spoke Tsunade as Naruto looked at her nodding. Really? Asked Naruto sadly even as a small pang went up from his gut as Tsunade nodded turning to Jureya before rising slowly the light from the window, catching the tears now dripping down her cheeks, allowing them to flash slightly in the dimness of the office. Jureya, I'm giving you a mission, you are to take Naruto outside the village, say it's for the ceiling I don't care just get him out of here. Officially you'll be going on a mission to spy on the Akatsuki. Train him to keep my little brother safe. Spoke Tsunade firmly as Jureya nodded at her. Won't be easy, you know, keeping this quiet. He replied as Tsunade gave him a small grin. I trust you. 
she whispered before kneeling down to pull Naruto into another embrace, whispering apologies as Naruto returned the embrace crying softly into her arms as he did. After a time the two finally broke apart, Naruto finding his emotions for some reason easy to check as he stood before her. Don't worry Tsunade. Spoke Jiraiya stepped forwards out of the light provided by the window to stand beside Naruto, his hand dropping down to ruffle the boy's blonde hair. I'll make him ready to take your chair when he gets back. Smiled Jiraiya as despite himself Naruto found himself smiling along with his sensei. Hi, just you wait, I'll make them sorry for throwing me out. Smiled Naruto as Tsunade gave a watery smile as the two disappeared in a flutter of leaves and wind, leaving Tsunade and Shizun in the destroyed remains of her office. You'll be alright, Lady Tsunade. Assured Shizun as Tsunade nodded, trying to keep from letting her sadness grip her again. Slowly she moved over to a cabinet that had survived her assault pulling out a bottle as she did. Lady Tsunade. Started Shizun before the blonde woman cut her off with a look. Don't try it Shizun, I'm getting drunk and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Tsunade spoke and Shizun sighed, shaking her head slightly. I wasn't going to, can I have some? Spoke Shizun sadly as her lady paused before pulling a pair of dishes out and tossing one to her apprentice. Hi, I suppose so. Zero zero. After reporting to the council Jiraiya and Naruto moved outside of the village, soon racing through a small clearing near the valley of the end. As the two had made their way out they passed the scarred landscape of each battlefield, dunes of sand, forests littered with weapons, while others were simply felled as if by some great scythe. Moving forwards helped somehow. The council meeting and ruling was still there, but somehow it didn't hang as heavily over him since Jiraiya had arrived. His sensei Jiraiya was right after all, it was just like a long training mission that stupid council wouldn't get their way, and who cares about them anyway. Rani Tsunade would have the village back in shape in no time, and then he could come back, he still had those who cared about him, and he could count on them. As the pair of shinobi pushed on, Naruto's mind continued to shift, keeping from allowing the thoughts of his banishment to fall upon him. Instead his mind showed flashes of his arrival back in Konoha only a day ago. Akashi had been there well briefly, he'd been so eager to get Sasuke and him to the hospital, he hadn't really be around to say much come to think of it, he didn't remember Kakashi staying with him at all, he'd just been interested in Sasuke same with Sakura, she'd barely stopped to greet him before rushing to check on her precious Sasuke. Come to think of it who had visited me there was Shikamaru lucky guy only got a figure broken, and then who else Shizun Nietzsche and Granny Tsunade oh and Hinata and Shino had ought wonder why Hinata fainted like that huh wait where was Jureya sensei? Why didn't he visit me? Wondered Naruto as his blue eyes trailed up to his traveling companion who was looking ahead with a focused look upon his brow. As he looked at the white-haired man he felt a small pang in his gut, followed by a pulse in his temple, causing him to flinch slightly. Ah what the? Wondered Naruto blinking down at his stomach for a moment as he felt another pang and pulse soon joined by a small itching sensation on top of his head. As he continued forwards into the woods, Naruto continued to get pang after pang, his head starting to throb, even as that itching intensified. Ah what the hell is that? If this keeps up I'll have to stop, but Jiraiya sensei said we had to keep moving darn it, what is that? Wondered Naruto reaching up with his unbandaged arm to scratch at that itchy spot. As his figures scraped across the spot small flecks of ink began to dig under his nails. After a few scratches it happened. Like a wave the crushing reality of what had happened hit him again. The banishment, what it meant, what it was, how how could he even think about being happy like before? What was wrong with him? Why was he just grinning like an idiot about this? Before these thoughts even had a moment to settle the painting in his gut hit again, as the throbbing sensation in his head was suddenly replaced by something else. A voice. You idiot get out of there. Roared a thunderous tone that caused Naruto to slip slightly as the massive wave of sadness and anger hit him full force only drowned out by those words. I would be what? Started Naruto before the fox roared out again, and Naruto felt those small twinges as the demonic chakra began to move through him. Shut up and run it's a trap you fool. It's a trap he's going to kill you roared the fox, his words hitting Naruto just as hard as his own emotions. Swiveling his eyes around he saw Jiraiya looking at him giving a small smile as they continued forwards. What Iro sensei wouldn't, you're lying. Started Naruto only to have Kaiubi cut him off again with another roar. But Iidi put a seal on you in that meeting to make you docile, he was lying the whole time. I can sense emotions he wasn't against that nonsense at the council meeting he was with him. He stopped me then. He's going to kill you to get to me yelled the fox again, as Naruto's eyes went slightly wide at the words, his mind flashing back to the pang he'd felt then just when Jiraiya had spoken. Before Naruto could begin to understand what was happening, Jiraiya suddenly came to a stop as they reached the edge of the valley, where Naruto had had his fight with Sasuke. Naruto was too late to stop himself as he landed beside Jiraiya, stiffening slightly as the older man turned to him with that same smile on his lips. Well Naruto. Ready to get that ceiling out of the way. Chuckled Jiraiya stepping forwards on hand reaching out towards the boy, only to have Naruto flinch back from him. 
It had been an unintentional basic instinct, coupled with Kaiubi's words that had caused him to do it, and it was all that saved his life, as he spied the seal upon Jiraiya's palm. No, dot no. Through Naruto his eyes bulged even as he saw the smile drop instantly from Jiraiya's face, and Kaiubi's roars began again. I'm not dying here boy run damn you. Take all of my chakra but run damn you. Roared Kaiubi as Naruto stumbled back, his body flooding with demonic chakra as he did. Without pausing Jiraiya sprang forward swiping his hand at the boy again, only to hit empty air, as a cloak of chakra sprung up around Naruto, allowing him to fly backwards from the sage's grasp, even as nine wavering tails of chakra exploded out of him, his eyes becoming slitted, as his form took on a feral appearance. I Ruby, I guess that seal wasn't enough. Spat Jiraiya as he readied himself, his words hitting Naruto like a physical blow. Dear why? Called Naruto his voice oddly feral, as the Kaiubi continued to scream at him to run. But he had to know, why why? Why was Jiraiya doing this? So it's still you how well I wanted to do this clean, but looks like that fox doesn't want to go easily, just stand still, and I'll make it quick okay. Spoke Jiraiya as Naruto looked horrified. But dot but. Started Naruto as Jiraiya gave an audible sigh. You're a danger to Konoha dot I'm sorry, but we can't give the fox to Akatsuki, and we can't protect you from them, the only choice is this. Tsunade was too soft and we knew it, but banishment risks you coming back for revenge, and that can't be allowed either. For what it's worth Gaki I'm sorry, but we won't see Konoha burn just for you. Spoke to Jiraiya. As his words filtered into Naruto's mind something inside of him snapped, and with a roar of primal fury, Naruto shot forwards with blinding speed. Jiraiya only had a moment to blink before a searing pain opened up across his chest, and he found himself lying backwards into the tree line, his last glimpse of Naruto being a nine-tailed chakra shroud disappearing across the valley westward. Ah damn it. Managed Jiraiya struggling to move, to rush after him even as his chest throbbed. The Kaiubi's chakra would have drawn the border patrol by now damn it, the plan was to have it be Orochimaru who attacked and killed him, now wait that was it. Well kid, looks like you're a traitor now. Muttered Jiraiya as he groaned, holding one hand firmly to his chest, keeping the wound from opening further as he waited to be found. A day later the story of how Orochimaru had arrived and offered Naruto the chance for revenge, and how he had taken the offer leaving Jiraiya barely alive in his wake, would be upon the lips of every soul of Konoha. On that day the future life of Naruto Uzumaki was changed forever. Zero zero. It was a few weeks later that found Naruto stumbling through the deserts of Suna, with only his shattered thoughts and the fox for company. We're lost, you know. Spoke the fox lazily as Naruto gave an annoyed groan as he forced his chakra to remain even on his feet, so he wouldn't sink into the sand. For the last time no we aren't going to Suna, that's west and in the desert this is exactly where we want to be. Shot back at Naruto as Kaiubi snorted. West and in the desert, oh well that solves everything now doesn't it, you've never been to Suna you stupid meatbag. If it wasn't for my chakra keeping your body fed you'd be dead by now. Spat the Kaiubi as Naruto sighed as he came to the top of a dune, only to see another on the horizon. For a moment Naruto just looked out across the dunes, his mind flashing over his life in one horrible river of pain. The orphanage, the glares and whispers, his teammates hate the villages Kakashi Sasuke Sakura, the council Jiraiya everyone. Slowly Naruto sank down onto the dune, his feet pushing into the warm sand, as he allowed fresh tears to fall from his eyes. It was too much, just too much. What again? Honestly, when are you going to stop crying about this? Grumbled the fox as Naruto growled. Shut up. Muttered the teen as the fox gave a snort. What was that, I couldn't hear you over your blubbering meat bag. Snapped back the fox as Naruto glared down at his own stomach. Shut up you stupid fox. Why can you go and feel sorry for yourself some more, you're wasting time, and my chakra with your pity parties. You well my life is ruined, I can't go home, my sensei betrayed me and I'm in the middle of the desert my life sucks. How like you even know the meaning of the word ruined, try being used like a weapon for some red-eyed nonsense twice, and then sealed with your body speared to a stone, and then ending up in a sewer for over 50 years. Then come crying to me. Spat the fox as Naruto stopped the fox's rant catching him off guard. What? Never mind the meat bag, you're wasting my time. Snorted the fox as it tried to cut the connection only to have Naruto's mind keep it open by force. Just tell me you're a furball or I'm not moving from this dune. Called Naruto as he folded his arms, plopping himself securely into the desert sand. For a few moments Kaiubi seemed willing to just let the boy sit there and sink into the sand. Ah fine you idiot, but I'm not doing story time while you sit and get moving. Roared the fox as Naruto despite himself found a smile playing across his lips as he pushed himself up and started moving forwards. It was a wonder what winning an argument with a legendary chakra fox could do for one's mood. As Naruto set off down the newest dune and Kaiui began his story back in Konoha the days after Naruto's betrayal had been chaotic at best. The border patrol had found Jiraiya not long after Naruto's escape, the Kaiubi chakra having been like a beacon to draw them in. 
fortunately or not by the time they reached the man he had already passed out from blood loss and was rushed back to Kanoha for medical care. It had been a day before he had been conscious enough to spin his tale of how Rachimaru had set upon them and how he had offered Naruto the chance at getting revenge on the village. Tsunade's heart had seized when Jiraiya had told her of what had happened, how Naruto had turned on him using the Kyuubi's chakra to attack him before racing off with the snake. If Tsunade had not just spent the last half a day trying to save the sage's life from the demonic chakra of his wound, she wouldn't have thought it possible. But the wound left little doubt that Naruto had attacked Jiraiya. When the council had demanded answers Jiraiya had again spun his tail, only the elders and Danzo knew the truth of his mission. Before the day was out, Naruto had been placed as a missing nin in the files of Konoha, with an A-rank threat level. Despite the council's pleas Tsunade refused to put a kill order out on the boy, yelling that if the council hadn't forced them to act the boy would never have gone to Urachimaru, and that she wasn't going to kill the boy for their mistake. So against the council's wishes Naruto was entered as a retrieval order only. What Tsunade had not expected however, was for the council then to announce to the village at large of Naruto's betrayal and his status as the Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi. When Tsunade had demanded to know why she shouldn't have them killed for breaking the third law, the response was simple. If he was now a danger to the village, their forces had to know what they could be running into. Looking out across the villages as the announcement had been made Tsunade watched firsthand as those few who had supported Naruto had gone from shock to anger at the council's words, and seeing this Tsunade's heart broke again as she turned to march back into her office, where she had been ever since. Inside the Hokage's office Tsunade sat behind her desk, her head upon her folded arms as she shook with sobs, whispering apologies to the boy who had been like a brother to her. I'm sorry Naruto Kami, I'm sorry. Whispered the blonde reaching up to grab a bottle laying upon her desk and tearing off the top to get at the sake within. Beside the desk sat Shizun, much like her lady in a state of open depression, sipping at a bottle of her own, even as she tried and failed to find words to help with Tsunade's pain. If if I'd fraught harder he he cried Tsunade and Shizun moved over to hold her lady. If we find him, Lady Tsunade, we'll find him. Managed Shizun as Tsunade's brown eyes turned to her red from weeping. Slowly Tsunade nodded at the woman's words as she allowed herself to slip closer to the woman's embrace, knowing deep down that even if the boy were to return, that few would be there to welcome him. At the same time across the village within a small training field, one of the few who would have welcomed Naruto back was even now watching as those who had been to boyfriends were discussing the blonde's recent departure, her wide pale eyes struggling to keep the moisture from escaping them. I can't believe he was the fox all along muttered a feral boy looking over to his stoic teammate, whose face was concealed by his oversized coat. Hiba, he is a Jinchuriki, not a fox. Replied the stoic figure as Kiba growled looking away from his friend. And that helps, he's a traitor now, he abandoned the village. What's it matter anymore? Muttered the teen as Shino let out a small sigh. I suppose it doesn't anymore though I wouldn't have thought it possible of him. Sasuke was shown to be influenced by the curse seal, but this is different. Replied Shino as a sigh drew the pair's attention to another of the group who stood a few feet away. You never know how someone will act when backed into a corner, the council was wrong, but it happened, and instead of trying to follow the Hokage's plan he chose revenge. Now he's joined that traitor Rachimaru face it, he's not the guy we knew. Muttered Shikamaru as beside him the heavy set Choji nodded sadly. Idiot, why? You all just risked your lives to bring Sasu Kun back, and now this. Oh, I don't get it. I mean the Hokage went out of her way to protect him, and he goes and turns traitor. Shouted Ino as beside her Sakura nodded slowly. He doesn't matter anymore, he's a traitor. He turned his back on everyone whispered Sakura as she looked over to Ino who nodded slightly. Beside the blonde Shikamaru, sighed, rubbing his forehead as he looked around at the members of the Rookie 9 gathered there. So that's it then we're in agreement. Asked Shikamaru looking around at the gathered genin who nodded in agreement, all except Hinata, who continued to watch them deciding the fate of their blonde companion. Alright, we'll handle this matter ourselves, Naruto Uzumaki is from our year, and we'll be the ones to bring him back to face his crimes or stop him if we need to. Finished Shikamaru as the group nodded, each slipping off individually till only Hinata remained, finally allowing her tears to fall as she fell to her knees. Nar Naruto-kun you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't dot please come back. Whimpered the Hayuga girl as she thought of the blonde knucklehead that she loved. Zero zero. Meanwhile across the world in the land of wind Naruto continued to trudge forwards through the desert, the sun having retreated for the day, leaving the moon to now hang over the vast sands, causing them to glow with an eerie white countenance. So it was that Madura guy that did all this that's crazy. Muttered Naruto as the fox snorted. No, that's the Ichiha, a bunch of red-eyed nonsense. Grumbled the Kaiubi as Naruto nodded continuing forwards. And he's descended from your dad wow, so you were a tree once. Asked Naruto as the fox snorted letting out a deep chuckle. I suppose you could say that, I was part of one anyway, all of my siblings were, it was only thanks to my father that we became something more. 
replied Kaiubi with what Naruto could almost call warmth to his tone. Sounds like an amazing guy. Replied Naruto as the Kaiubi chuffed. Of course he was, what would you expect from the father of the great Kaiubi? Called the fox as Naruto found himself smiling slightly as he looked on ahead. So your previous hosts were Yuzumaki's as well that Mito and that Kashina lady. Asked Naruto a small note of hope in his tone that did not go unnoticed to the fox. Hi, both of them, but unlike you their seals were more solid and painful. Can't say I ever spared more than a word with either, except for when that stupid Kashina would come to argue with me about something. Replied the fox as Naruto's heart sank slightly. He'd hoped that he would have learned a little more about the Yuzumakis from the fox, but it seemed he was at a loss. For the fox, the previous seals had been true prisons, almost nothing got in or out, he only even knew who he had been sealed in due to those brief visits he had mentioned. Oh I see. Still, at least you're willing to speak with me, I guess that's something better than the other Yuzumakis. Muttered the fox as Naruto felt a small smile twitch at his lips. DH thanks. Whispered Naruto as Kurama gave a small huff ignoring the team's comment as the pair continued forwards across the dunes. After a few days of travel, Naruto's body was finally reaching its limit. Thanks to Kaiubi's chakra he had been able to stave off exhaustion, burning it to keep his body going, but even this had its limits. Staggering forwards Naruto found himself slipping down a sandy dune, his feet failing him as he slipped into a roll. As the team's body banged down the embankment, he could vaguely hear Kaiubi's annoyed cries, but even that was somehow distant. My body is so tired just a little nap you just a nap. Though the boy as his body finally came to a halt, his eyes drifting shut, their last view being of some kind of green that he couldn't quite place, prompting one final thought before darkness claimed him. What's a tree doing in the desert? As Naruto's consciousness faded he could not know that at long last he had reached a land that none had traveled to since the days of the first Hokage. Lying against the border of the desert upon a small patch of grass that was the entrance into the land of the west, long since lost to the elemental nations. An unknown amount of time passed Naruto by as he lay unconscious. Vaguely he was aware his body was moving at times, but everything was a blur at best. Finally after what felt like an eternity Naruto found himself coming into consciousness again, his eyes blinking the blurriness away as a soft light touched his eyes. Agwa. Mumbled Naruto noticing how dry his mouth had become as his eyes drifted around taking in where he was lying. It was a small room, simple most would call it, but warm in its own way. A few small bits of furniture were scattered around giving it a live and feel to it. Pushing himself up slightly Naruto found himself lying in a bed, the heavy quilts laying upon shifting as he sat up. Where? Muttered Naruto. Well, look who's back. Hi Ubi. It looks like you passed out on the edge of the desert. I told you we weren't going the right way. Added the fox in an I told you so tone that caused Naruto to groan. Eh whatever. Muttered Naruto pushing himself out of the bed noticing as he did that he was dressed in only his boxers. As his feet touched the ground a small noise drew his eyes around to the door, where a figure stood blinking at him, her hands held up to her mouth covering it, as her yellow eyes met his. Naruto suddenly became very aware of his dress, letting out a small yell of embarrassment, as he pulled the quilted bed top to cover himself blushing slightly, as he looked across at the woman in the doorway, who waved now giving an almost mocking smile at the boy's actions, idly brushing a few strands of flowing green hair from her shoulders, that fell down her back, hugging her rather impressive frame, against the white dress she wore. Who who are you? Called Naruto trying to hide his embarrassment as the woman gave a small laugh moving into the room and taking a seat not far from him, still giving him a slightly annoying smile. It's common to give your own name first thought also to be dressed before addressing a lady. Chuckled the woman, her tone slightly mocking but in more amusement than anything else. Still blushing slightly, Naruto looked around the room spying his clothes folded beside the bed on a small end table. What followed was a rather comical period where Naruto tried to get dressed while keeping himself covered by the blanket, causing him to fall several times, drawing a few chuckles from the green-haired woman that watched him. Finally Naruto was dressed noting as he pulled on his shirt that the tears and holes seemed to have been patched, so that he at least was no longer dressed in rags. Well that took you some time, though I will admit it was rather entertaining. Chuckled the woman as Naruto gave her a small pouting look that seemed to only entertain her all the more. Be well you could have looked away called Naruto as the woman chuckled again. And I could have left you to die on the edge of the desert. I chose to do neither. Chuckled the woman as Naruto paused. You saved me? Asked Naruto, drawing a smile to the woman's lips. That is done, now your name if you don't mind. Called the woman as Naruto gave her another small pout before speaking. Hi, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Called Naruto as the woman nodded. I see, well Naruto you may call me CC for now. I have some questions for you, but more importantly I have to know, do you come from the east? Asked the now identified CC her words catching Naruto slightly off guard. The East. What does she mean? Wondered Naruto as Kaiubi shrugged. 
Well you did cross the desert idiot, these must be the western lands, I remember my father mentioning them once long ago. It's likely you're the first since him to cross over all the way. Remark the fox as Naruto gave a mental nod looking back to CC who was waiting for his reply. Um yeah I'm from the east. Replied Naruto as CC nodded. I see, and from this, here she held up his shinobi headband waving it slightly, I take it you are a shinobi correct? Remark the yellow eyed woman as Naruto stiffened his mind already racing. Oh no, if she finds out then she might contact Konoha. They'll come to get me. What am I going to do? Though Naruto was in a rush, the panic in his mind apparently made its way onto his face, as the woman let out a small chuckle, tossing him the headband as she pushed herself up. Easy there, I'm not looking to turn you in or anything, just keep it quiet. Here in the west people like you are rare, and I don't want one of those lords showing up to wreck my home, just to get to you. Spoke the woman drawing a confused look from Naruto. People like me? He asked, wondering if she could possibly know about the Kai Ubi. Yes you, chakra wielders, here in the west your type is rare, heck I think I've only met a handful of others since I've been alive. Commented the woman idly scratching at her chin as she took a contemplating look. Wh what? No chakra? Asked Naruto as CC shrugged. Well kind of, I mean we all have some, but only enough to do minor stuff, nothing like the stuff we hear the east is capable of, but we get by just fine on our own. We've found a way around the stuff, trust me you don't need chakra to be dangerous here. Spoke the woman giving a small shrug before continuing to speak. Now come on unless you want to spend all day in my back room. You've been down for a few days, and I'm not babysitting. Commented the woman as she rose, turning to leave the room, Naruto trotting along after her his mind still buzzing with questions of this new land. CC soon showed him her village, nothing too large, but quaint in a way. A few people waved at the pair as they moved around through the squares and markets, Naruto looking around at the villagers. Their dress was a little different to him, a lot like what he'd seen in waves, but something else was missing. No shinobi, none, he had grown up surrounded by such people, not seeing them here felt odd. As the day stretched on Naruto found himself relaxing more and more around this CC woman. She wasn't really overly kind, if anything she acted more like an older sibling to him openly mocking him, while at the same time teaching him about the western lands he now found himself in. From what she told him the western lands had once been united under some crazed leader over a hundred years ago, who had eventually died at the hands of one of his sons. After that the empire had shattered, forming into feuding lords that fought for the empire's throne, leading to the state of things as they were now. In return Naruto told CC all about the East, as well as his own life, avoiding speaking at any length about his recent departure. After a time both found themselves back in CC's home Naruto helping her as she prepared a meal still chatting ideally as they did. So what now Naruto, far as I can tell you don't want to go back East, and the West isn't exactly the safest place to just be wandering around. Commented the woman as she tipped a few diced vegetables into a pot looking over to see Naruto chopping some meat, but stopping as she spoke. CC watched as the boy's hand seemed to tremble slightly holding the knife he had been using his whole body tensing, as he looked down at his hands. What am I going to do? I can't go home and if I go back into the desert I could really die this time. What am I going to do? Wondered Naruto shivering slightly before he felt a small warm embrace encircle him. Blinking up, Naruto saw CC's smiling face looking down into his eyes a moment before she reached out to flick his nose. Ow, hey. Started Naruto before CC interrupted him. Well whatever, you still have to pay me back for all the work saving you, so it's not like I'm sending you away just yet, so stop moping and get back to chopping. Called CC as she let go of him casting a small smile back as she moved back to the stew casting Naruto a small look back as she reached it. Hey, that wasn't a suggestion Naruto got to chopping. Called the woman as Naruto shook himself slightly, turning to get back to work with a small trace of a smile spreading over his face. Things carried on like this for a few more days, with CC getting Naruto to perform chores around her home, telling him a few things here and there about the West, in return for Naruto sharing more about the East and his own life with her. As the days continued on Naruto found himself smiling again, since he had left Konoha. It still hurt for him to remember the village, his friends, but if he couldn't go back, at least it seemed he'd found a home to belong in. Zero zero. It had been a few days since Naruto had begun to settle into a habit with CC that the blonde found himself at the market, his eyes scanning down a list as he moved from stall to stall. Okay carrots, radish, beef, is that everything? Muttered Naruto. I'm not your private secretary and you forget the beans again. Snorted the fox as Naruto mentally slapped himself turning back to the opposite side of the market where the groceries were. Darn it, why didn't you tell me earlier? Grumbled Naruto as he set off back the way he came, his tenant chuckling as he marched. Because I like to see you suffer, it makes me feel all warm and tingly. Chuckled the fox as Naruto's sentimental glare his way. You're a sadist. Muttered the blonde as the fox chuckled. Just as Naruto was about to fire up with a fresh insult, a whistling above drew his eyes skyward. 
For a few moments the blonde simply stared into the vast skies, until a small black spot that seemed to be drawing closer drew his attention. For a few seconds Naruto just watched the speck trying to figure out what it was, till his eyes went wide in sudden horrible understanding. Okami everyone run! Cried Naruto dropping his bags as he started dashing forwards towards the town square. Around him several people stopped looking towards the boy they had come to know over the past week, before looking skyward to try and spot what he had. One by one people froze in horror before cries rang out as what appeared to be several armored figures connected to some kind of bright yellow gliders came into view. As they swooped lower Naruto spied the armor they were wearing his heart racing, as he recognized a few of the symbols upon it. That looks like the armor that Dodo guy from Snow War, but why is it here? Called Naruto as he saw the small group of flying figures dip down large rectangular cannons in their hands, all trained down upon the village. Second, with the sound of grinding metal, a storm of metal started to rain down from the airbound figures, sending up a blast of dust and stone as they raced across the square and shops, drawing cries of fear and pain from those below. As the metal began to fly, Naruto's world went red as he leapt upon the side of one building racing up its length, his eyes burning as he focused on the flying figures. One of the airborne assailants was just banking around for another pass, when a cry of rage drew his eyes around his mind, freezing as he saw the red-eyed Naruto flying towards him, a swirling ball of purple chakra in one hand outstretched in his hand. The flyer's last sight was that of the swirling orb plunging into his face before his mind went blank. His fellows in the skies turned just in time to see their partner's glider spinning down to crash into the square, as they were forced to veer off, as a wave of oversized shuriken flew upwards from a blonde youth standing in the village square. As the remaining flyers swerved back into position their cannons trained on the boy a series of pops behind them drew their eyes around. The wave of smoke met their eyes as the blade flung towards them exploded into copies of the boy, each now pelting down at them. Before the flyers could manage to avoid them blonde blurs crashed into their gliders clawed hands digging into the steel as they impacted. Soon each of the flyers were tumbling down to the ground, their occupants either roaring in anger as they tried and failed to fling the attacking clones off of them, or already silenced by a well-placed kunai. At the same time Naruto was already moving, leaving the small group of flyers to their face, his mind racing as he pelted down the road towards CC home panic, tearing at his insides like a ravenous beast. As Naruto came out of the town proper, he turned just in time to see CC's home now ablaze a great hole torn into its side, with several of the same armored figures from the square, scattered about lying motionless around the area, while still others stood around their cannons pointed outwards a few taking notice of Naruto as he came into view. Seeing this, Naruto's heart froze. CC. Cried Naruto rushing forwards towards the home, the armored figure's cannons tracking over towards the boy, even as he brought his own hand up into a familiar hand sign. Just as the figures were about to open fire Naruto erupted into a cloud of smoke, as a wave of red-eyed blondes exploded into being all rushing forwards, as the armored forces looked on in horror. With howls of fear the forces began spraying fire into the advancing wave of blondes kunai flinging themselves into their midst as clones exploded left and right. However, it was too little to stop the tide of Naruto who swept over the gunners dragging them down, as Naruto shot past towards the home, skidding to a halt as the entrance collapsed in a crash, the flames swallowing it whole a second later. No CC. Cried Naruto as his legs went out from under him, his eyes losing their red glow as he watched the flames consume the home. In horror Naruto watched as the home began to collapse in on itself, his mind struggling to fight what he was seeing, even as a harsh voice called out across from where he laid. You. Boy. Cried a bark of a voice causing Naruto to look around to see a tall armored figure who, like his fellows wore the grey chakra armor, only sported a heavy layer of metal plates all along it, making him appear almost like some walking fortress. His face twisted into a scowl barely visible from his armored helm. Naruto however didn't respond, his face vacant as he watched the latest home burn. Naruto. Naruto damn it snap out of it. Roared Kaiubi as the great armored figure swept a massive spiked club around moving forwards towards the stationary boy. CC.everyone.wh.yy. Though Naruto his world collapsed once again even as the club came roaring down towards him. But the blow never reached him. There was a grinding of metal as the massive weapon was forced back, even as a wide armored figure stepped past Naruto, a long straight blade coming around flicking through the air gracefully, as the armored man let out a howl of pain, a crimson line opening up across his armored chest, as he fell back a few steps cursing. You. Roared the man, his hand reaching up to try and press his wound closed, even as the newest arrival looked down towards Naruto. The boy's eyes had gone wide at what he was now seeing. The figure before him stood in armor as well, only different from what he had seen. 
The one it was bright white and more form-fitting, though heavy interlocking plate still covered it, only showing small flashes of black and blue at the joints, where the knees and armored shoulders hung just enough to allow for movement. However, that was not what drew Naruto's eyes, it was the wave of green hair leading up to a familiar face that drew his eyes, even as a familiar smirk looked down at him. Honestly I sent you to do some shopping, and here I found you playing with these idiots. I take one week away from the lines and you get nothing but trouble. Muttered the armored maiden as Naruto's eyes welled up with tears. See see he cried as the armored woman gave him a small smirk. Of course, a little fire would be enough to stop me. I told you that we of the west didn't need chakra to be dangerous. Chuckled CC as she turned, lifting her blade again, its tip pointed towards the armored figures, as her eyes flashed dangerously. Naruto followed her movement, his eyes falling upon the long straight blade, unlike the curved blade he had seen in the east, its tip aimed directly at the figure before them. Itch for my lord you will die here and your pathetic forces will follow. Roared the hulking figure as he swung his weapon up one again. Before he could even manage to lift the weapon fully CC had already moved her figure almost seeming to vanish into a blur of white as she sprung forwards, her blade outstretched. Naruto watched in awe as she flew forwards, her speed reminding him of what he had seen Lee once accomplished back in his own village. Before the figure could even recognize the attack had begun it was over, as CC his blade punched clear through his armor, the point forced out his back as a wave of crimson exploded out of him. But the quick flick the blade was back out, and CC had skipped back a few steps allowing the armored figure to collapse, as she turned still smirking to see Naruto's stunned face. What's the matter with Naruto? Never seen a woman fight before, though I suppose I am still incredible to behold. Commented the woman flicking her blade before sheathing it with a sharp snap, so that it hung at her side. As she marched back over to where Naruto sat she was suddenly bawled over as the boy flung himself forwards with enough force to bring her down, his arms wrapped around her as he cried catching her off guard. I thought you were managed Naruto between tears as CC sighed looking down at the boy and moving, so that one armored hand rested lightly upon his head, her figures running gently through his hair. Hi, I understand, but I can't go anywhere yet, besides you still owe me. Chuckled CC as Naruto nods into her form not releasing her from his grip. Zero zero. After a time Naruto had managed to calm himself enough to start asking what was happening. However, before he could get his answers a small army of armored figures had arrived, all sporting armor more similar to CCS, and rushing to find her. As Naruto watched he saw them rushing about tending to the injured, while others gathered the weapons and armor of the fallen forces, all under the watchful eye of CC. As the day came to an end Naruto found himself seated in a large tent across from CC, who had finally removed most of her armor, and was now facing him in the same dress she had worn when they had first met. So I'm guessing you want answers right? Asked CC as Naruto nodded causing her to smirk slightly. I thought so. Will remember me telling you about those fighting to reclaim the kingdom? Asked the woman as Naruto nodded. Good, seems you can listen. Chuckled CC as Naruto gave her an annoyed look that only seemed to amuse her all the more. Anyway, I just happen to be the leader of this particular group you see. Started the green-haired woman gesturing out of the tent towards where a large force of armored figures were milling about. Then you're trying to take over the country? Asked Naruto as CC shrugged. I suppose that's one way to put it. Really I along with several others, simply became tired of the constant conflicts taking our homes. Most of those out there are from places just like that town, caught up in a war they didn't ask for. For us the only way to keep from dying for someone else's stupid war, is to end it ourselves. Remarked CC as Naruto nodded slightly looking over at her armor for a moment before looking back at her. So those guys. He started. Were there to raid the village, it was just bad luck it was where I had gone to recover, just like it was good luck I found you at the edge of the desert. Replied CC as Naruto nodded. See can I stay with you? Asked Naruto as CC gave him a contemplating look. I wouldn't be against Naruto, someone like you is a game changer for our forces. The major powers have been gathering chakra wielders and forcing them into their armies for a long time. Even I can't take some of them on in a fair fight, and not to brag, but I'm easily the best fighter our forces have. Remarked the woman reaching out to wrap lightly against her armor. Besides from how you handled those forces, it might just be possible for us to put an end to all of this stupid fighting. Spoke CC as Naruto felt a small smirk move across his lips. You just say that so you can sleep in more. Pointed out Naruto as CC gave off a small chuckle. Maybe so what do you say Naruto? Want to help me liberate the West? Who knows you might even pay off your debt to me along the way. Finished CC as Naruto found himself grinning in reply. I'll do it. Called the boy as CC rose. Well then let's go and meet the troops, after all, you'll be the first chakra user they've met that hasn't tried to kill them. Spoke CC as Naruto hopped up to follow after her and out into the camp. He may have lost his future in the east, but his future in the west was only just beginning. Years. Years and years of conflict. 
the only life those in the West had known from the time they were born to their deaths, either coming with old age or more commonly coming by being caught up in the flames of war themselves. It had been over a hundred years since the ancient times of the first emperor, who had aimed to claim the world itself as his prize. The man had led his country to ruin across as many battlefields as he could find, until his final breaths were silenced. What he left behind was a broken land, a warring land. The land Naruto now fought to unite. Inside a large military camp a tall figure made his way forwards through the tents, men and women halting in their tasks to snap off salutes or call out greetings that the man returned as he moved among them. As the figure stepped between the campsites the firelight reflected off of his crimson armor. The layered suit making the man appear as a mobile fortress, tightly packed chakra armor layered threefold before heavy overlocking plates were fitted on top, each layer containing a new wave of seals ingrained into every inch of the metal itself, with interlays of chakra metal for added effect. Despite the layers in play the armor remained mostly form-fitting, with only the shoulders being slightly extended to hold storage for weapons and scrolls that complemented the armored figure's style. From the rear hung a hilt of a blade that looked as though it belonged to some massive blade, but only sporting the small point to it no longer than a foot. Despite this odd weapon the armor itself made the figure look all but invincible which was not far from the truth. In effect it would take something like an s rank jutsu to even help of punching through the armor in a clear shot, and adding the chakra metal on top of that meant that despite its weight, the damage to the man's movement was negligible. The westerners may not have had the power to fling fire and lightning from their fingertips, but they did hold the mightiest shields ever created. With the combination of chakra metal and seals, the West had found a way to store what little chakra they had into a viable source of power, the chakra armor had simply been the first step. No one outside of the West had seen the like of what now covered the man before them. Through small bits of the Western technology filtering into the East whenever a warlord sought to gain funding for his next campaign, but nothing like what was in play now. As the armored figure stepped past another fire his armored helm turned, the smooth viewing mask showing a pair of glowing blue eyes that focused upon a few figures as the tail plume colored red like the tail of some fox waved behind the figure brushing lightly upon his armored form as he made his way over to a long table. Scattered around the table a few armored figures were in discussion pointing every now and then to the large map laid out before them. The first was a woman in form-fitting wide armor not unlike his own, sporting a small sea of green hair. Noticing his approach she brought her usual smirk to her lips as she turned to face him. Beside her stood a rather unremarkable looking youth his form thin for someone in a military camp, draped only in a formal kimono, however the brilliance in those purple eyes of his told anyone that he was not the type to do his fighting with force, nor did he need to. Across from the pair stood three others also covered in armor of their own, closer to what their fellow green-haired woman wore, as opposed to the goliath that the red-armored figure had. The first of these was a young woman whose features were delicate, while still holding a power behind them that dared anyone to challenge her. Her hair fell just to over her armored shoulders, that were the same shade of purple as her hair, except for the black breastplate and touches of gold around shoulders. If one were to watch they would also notice that she continued to watch the woman to her left as though always on guard around her. The source of her concern was her opposite in only temperament. She looked to be a touch younger than the purple-haired woman, her own hair would have fallen down like her back like a carpet to her feet if it was not drawn back in a single ponytail of brilliant pink draped over her own white armor, a mirror of the one worn by her green-haired companion. Unlike her fellow her beauty stemmed from the overflowing happiness that seemed to simply drip from her as her blue eyes traced over to the approaching figure, her mouth turning up in a smile that could melt even the most frozen heart. The final member of the table was a red-haired woman who appeared about the same age as the purple-eyed man across from her, her own hair cut in short crop that left a few spikes to fall around her face that sported a perpetual look of confidence. Like her fellows she was draped in armor, but unlike theirs, hers was colored a bright crimson, except for the golden chest plate and small touches upon the arms and legs where color gave way to a darker gray. As the armored man came to halt it was the pink-haired figure that spoke first. Naruto kun why do you always have to wear that helmet everywhere? came a happy voice turning into a cute pout that drew a few chuckles from CC as the rest watched a figure reach one armored hand up to remove his helm, showing a mess of golden spikes hanging above two bright blue eyes and a rich smile. Sorry Euphemia-chan, force of habit. Chuckled Naruto setting the crimson helm before him as across the table the purple-eyed man let out a sigh, ideally rubbing at his head. Euphemia honestly, this is a war council. Muttered the man as the pink-haired girl turned her pouting face towards him in turn. Oh drop it Lelich, she can do as she likes. Spoke the woman to Euphemia's left drawing the man's eyes around her stern face. Perneli Onison, you spoil her. Sighed Lelich as across from him the red-haired woman snorted, jabbing a figure over at the man chuckling as she spoke. Though big talk coming from you Lelich, you let Nunnally get away with murder. Called the redeed causing the man to flush with embarrassment as those at the table let out a series of laughs at his expense. Through Colin, but I think that's enough chit-chat for now. 
Naruto Lelich has finished outlining the next attack, after our last battle, it looks like they are desperate. Spoke CC as Naruto nodded, turning his attention towards the woman who had become like a sister to him over the years. It had been a long road, but Naruto had stayed beside CC as they battled to free the land from the eternal conflict that it seemed trapped in. It had taken years to come to where they were now, but at last they were nearing the end, only one enemy remained before this war could finally come to a conclusion. Right, with our last push we decimated their airfields, even if they managed to get a few gliders up in the air, it won't matter at this point. On top of that Cornelia managed to take out their last heavy chakra wielder, so at this time they only have standard forces remaining. Continued Lelich as he pointed to different areas on the man under the group's watchful eyes. And the supply lines. Asked Naruto looking up as Colin spoke up. We got word just an hour ago, looks like she and her partner managed to gum it up something special, say what you want, that kid has a talent for this kind of thing. Chuckled the repeat as the rest nodded. Hi, anyway it's all over but the fighting at this point. Though I still say waiting to hear back on our terms is a waste of time, they aren't going to submit. Finished Lelich as Naruto let out a sigh running an armored hand through his hair. As you've said every time I've asked to offer one, honestly Lelich if it was up to you we'd never have prisoners. Muttered Naruto as the purple-eyed man shrugged slightly. If they come to a battlefield they take their lives in their own hands, I simply do not see risking our side's lives for theirs as a winning move. Spoke the man as across from him Euphemia shook her head. Lelich, she began before her brother raised his hands in a sign of surrender. Yes, yes I know second chances, I'm sorry Euphemia, but I'm a realist. Replied the man as beside the pink-haired woman her fellow laid a hand gently upon her armored shoulder. I know it's harsh, but it's what needs to be done sometime, youth. The sooner this ends the sooner things like this won't be necessary anymore. Till then such things need to be done, we only want to make this land one where people like you and Nunley are safe from being turned into weapons. Finished Cornelia as her sister looked to her for a moment before allowing her head to drop into a nod. Well I suppose there is nothing for it, but to wait for the reply for now, our forces are already arranged by Naruto. Finished Lelich as he nodded before moving away, Colin falling into step beside him even as Euphemia and Cornelia followed soon after them. You know that soft side of yours is going to get you in trouble one of these days, and I won't be there to bail you out. Chuckled CC now moving up in years as she stepped past Naruto rapping lightly on his armored chest as she passed. Hi sensei, I know. Still it gained us some amazing allies wouldn't you say? Smirked Naruto as the green-haired woman chuckled. I suppose it has, and just think pretty soon we can put this war behind us, and then nothing but lounging about all day for me and that wonderful baked bread we found. Smiled CC as she moved past Naruto who just shook his head at the woman's words. A lot had changed over the years of conflict, but something still remained the same. Casting his mind back, Naruto took a moment to recognize just how much had changed, not least of all himself. Zero, minus four years previously, Naruto came running through military camp dodging around armored figures, a few of whom called out to him as he passed them, throwing a wave back, even as he rushed forwards into the heart of the camp. After a few more misses the blonde boy finally made his way to his destination, skidding to a halt before CC who turned smirking at his arrival. As Naruto reached her, he finally stopped panting slightly as he looked up into her smirking face. I am done. Breathed out Naruto as CC quirked an eyebrow up. Is that so managed already? Asked the woman, obviously amused with the state of the team. In response Naruto nodded before holding out a hand, his face turning to one of pure focus as he went very still. For a few moments nothing happened, until a low buzz started to sound as wisps of chakra gathered around his palm. After a few seconds the swirling chakra had amassed into a ball of blue chakra, as Naruto grinned up at CC. See, I did it. Called Naruto happily as CC nodded. Yep, looks like you actually managed to master your own skill. Chuckled the woman as Naruto shot her an annoyed look letting the chakra disperse as he did. Hey it's not as easy as it looks. Called the boy as the woman chuckled. I suppose not but, neither is my training. Still I suppose you kept your end of the deal so I'll do what I can, you start tomorrow. Finished the woman as Naruto threw up his arms with a wide grin on his lips. Yes just wait I'm going to be awesome. Called Naruto happily as he ran off back into the camp. Awesome, now I can start learning from CC Sensei, this is going to be just as powerful as her. Though the grinning blonde was inside his mind a deep rumbling chuckle answered him. I suppose it's better than watching you train alone, honestly you actually had to be told to master your own skills. Chuckled the fox as Naruto sent him a mental glare. Hey it's not that easy I didn't have a lot of help you know. Shot back the boy causing the fox to snort slightly. I remember, just keep in mind that you're working with me too, I'm not going to die just because you were too weak. Called the fox causing Naruto to mentally smirk. As if, you're stuck with me partner. Called Naruto as he rounded a corner getting a snort from Kaiubi in reply. The following days found Naruto being driven into the ground by both CC and the Kaiubi in his training. 
As CC explained to him chakra users were rare in the western lands. Maybe one out of every hundred people were born with enough chakra to make them an effective fighter with it. Thanks to that, sealing was the limit of most chakra use, and even that was mostly limited to protection towards armor or powering some of their creations. Oddly enough it turned out Karama was very knowledgeable about seals in general, he said it was one of the few things that the seal had allowed to filter through when he had been held in his previous hosts, just random information, but when the alternative was literally nothing, the fox had taken to learning it, if only to stave off the boredom. Couple that with the physical training that CC put him through, and Naruto was being run ragged nearly every day. In the meantime the forces were always on the move, to date a few skirmishes had broken out, but nothing large scale and CC was careful to keep Naruto back from the lines till he was ready. She explained to him that since chakra users were rare they were also valuable, and in most cases collected like tools, and then trained to enter into warlords armies. If Naruto was caught it was likely he would suffer a similar fate. Still that didn't mean that chakra wielders were necessarily the strongest warriors either. This was shown to Naruto on several days where he lay panting on the ground after a round with CC the woman smirking over at him from her position. If I don't get it, how can you be so strong without chakra? Managed Naruto panting as the woman chuckled at him. How, same as everyone else training, even with our limited chakra our bodies are capable of excelling, and without any abilities to distract us, our only focus can be our styles. In fact if you ever see a chakra wielder on the battlefield be sure that they will have a guard with them at least as powerful as myself. Chakra wielders work in pairs, the guard making up for the lack of the chakra wielder and vice versa. Lectured CC as Naruto blinked up at her from his position on his back. Oh oh replied Naruto as he tried to catch his breath. Relax Naruto, you won't be seeing battle for a long time, not until I say so anyway. Called CC as she pulled her blade from the earth pointing it at Naruto. Well get up and go again. She called as Naruto groaned, pushing himself up Kaiubi laughing at his discomfort. Minus two years from that time, over the years Naruto found himself steadily becoming a force of destruction, thanks to CCS and Kaiubi's guidance, but even that had not prepared him for the first time he had taken to the battlefield. He would remember it till his dying day, as their forces charged down the hill armored figures at its base rushing forwards to form some kind of defense before they reached them. Naruto was beside CC, his newly fitted armor was gray like the regular forces, but sporting a few more plates, like the one CC's armor had caused it to still feel a bit heavy, as he raced to keep pace with the white-clad woman. The target was a supply convoy headed towards a fortress within the neighboring lord's territory. As they flung themselves down the hill Naruto's eyes had traced across the convoy as figures rushed here and there trying to prepare before they were engaged. They weren't fast enough. The first lines crashed into one another CCS forces carving forwards and into the convoy, as the crash of metal rang out, accompanied by the occasional explosion or rattle of a kunai launcher. Above their gliders swept past spraying waves of steel down into the defenders, moments before their own forces overtook them. As Naruto moved ahead he swung an armored fist around, crashing it into a figure who had tried to bring a kunai launcher to bear on him. With a sickening crash the man was flung back through the air into a carriage behind him, causing the whole thing to shift and fall, spilling crates that burst to reveal more of the kunai cannons. Focus on Naruto. Called CC as she swung forward slamming her blade into an armored figure, before raising an arm up to protect her face, as a wave of kunai shot towards her, glancing off of her armor, as she rushed over to attack the shooter. Naruto was about to follow after her when an explosion caught him flinging him off of his feet and forwards to skid across the earth. As he came to a halt, Naruto turned to fall into a roll coming up to his feet in time to see the last vestiges of green lightning, fading from where it had impacted behind him. Looking up, Naruto was just able to spot a figure standing atop one of the carts that seemed to be moving some kind of green lightning between his fingertips. The figure was dressed in what Naruto could only describe as an armored kimono, his hair spiked back even as the lightning gathered around him, giving him the look of a madman. Before he could even take in what he was seeing the man had thrust his hands forwards, as a wave of lightning larger than any Naruto had ever seen slammed into the earth before him carving its way towards him. At the last moment Naruto flung himself out of the way as the wave continued catching a few unlucky figures in its wake, drawing shrieks of pain from their throats. What the hell? Cried Naruto as inside Kaiubi let out an angry roar. Idiot. Don't question, just fight cried the fox as Naruto jerked left avoiding another trail of lightning grabbing a kunai launcher and firing a small wave of projectiles up, only to see the figure catch them in another wave of green lightning before flinging them back at him. But how's he doing that? I've never seen Chakra do that. Cried Naruto as another wave of lightning rushed past him. Never mind, just close in on him. Cried the fox as Naruto sprang forwards, his hand shifting before a moment later the area was full of armored teams rushing the man. 
As lightning continued to crash down on him Naruto waved in and out of the blast, his clones attempting the same, but vanishing as the trails connected with them. Meanwhile Naruto was already pooling his chakra into an orb of blue and red chakra that hummed in his hand as he raced past battling men towards his target, dodging here and there to avoid the odd attack. Eat this! cried Naruto as he finally closed in on the figure leaping into the air, as he pointed his open palm down towards the figure, the ball of red and blue chakra fidgeting for a moment before blasting off like a cannon. The figure below attempted to raise a defense, but before he could the orb reached him, and with a thunderous explosion the man as well as the card he had been standing atop, vanished into a blast of smoke and fire. As Naruto dropped back to earth he was almost too late as a massive blade came swinging around towards him. A heavily armored figure had rushed Naruto the moment he had closed in, only just reaching him as he hung in freefall, unable to avoid the incoming attack. Shit! cried Naruto as the blade neared him. With a clang of steel the blade caught him cutting into his armor and drawing a strangled cry as he was flung to the ground skidding as he hit. Looking up Naruto saw the armored figure now rushing him, his massive sword raised for a second strike. At the last moment Naruto managed to push himself up, taking the blow on one shoulder and turning it so that the blade sank into the earth beside him while he brought a swirling ball of blue chakra up to punch into the figure's chest. But the grinning explosion of force the Rasengan connected, flinging the larger figure back a few steps but only managing to crack his armor. Staggered but not finished, the armored soldier rushed him again, swinging his blade back, just as CC darted past her blade, snapping out in a graceful arc that sent the man's head flying from his shoulder. Naruto. Called the woman turning to see Naruto holding his side, but managing to stand. I'm okay, just a scratch. Managed the blonde as CC watched him for a moment before a few of their forces reached them. The men escort him back to camp now. Called CC Naruto looked ready to argue, but one look from the green-haired woman was enough to silence those thoughts immediately. Moving back to camp Naruto spared on last look back to where their forces were just finishing up the battle, the caravan all but finished. It had been his first battle, and despite everything he had done it had almost been his last. A lesson he would remember. Zero zero. In the present Naruto found himself blinking back from his memories, his gaze dropping down to the table before him as he scanned the battlefield. After a few checks Naruto recognized that, as usual, Lilich had thought of everything when it came to these fights. Honestly if he was a bit stronger I'd be scared of him. Muttered Naruto as he turned from the table marching off into the camp. After a small journey the armored man found himself stepping through the canopy of one of the larger tents, pushing back a flap allowing the soft light from within to briefly illuminate the darkness outside. As he stepped forwards, it was to move into an open area where a few small tables, as well as chairs sat about. His eyes slowly dropped from the canvas walls of the tent onto the figures seated around a small table, the smallest of which turned her wide purple eyes to an innocent smile playing across her lips that seemed to enhance the simple kindness she embodied. Naruto-kun. Smiled the girl slowly turning to face him, her waving blonde hair moving only a little in the quiet of the tent. Hello Nunnally, I hope he hasn't been causing you trouble. Replied Naruto, smiling as he saw the young girl shake her head slightly, her hands folded lightly over the simple yellow dress she wore. Of course not, Kurama-kun was on his best behavior. Replied the girl happily as she turned her head over to where the kitsune lay. The red-furred creature was only about the size of a large dog, its nine tails wrapped gently around it as a soft purring issued from its nuzzle. Every now and then its long rabbit-like ears would twitch, drawing a small giggle from Nunley. Honestly, only you could turn him into a house pet. Chuckled Naruto as Nunley grinned up at him reaching down to the wheels of her chair to help push herself a bit back from the table. Naruto-kun that isn't nice, maybe if you were more polite to Kurama-kun he wouldn't fight with you so much. Lectured Nunley in her soft voice as Naruto sighed, casting the sleeping fox a glace as he did. Or maybe you just have a way with stubborn people. Chuckled Naruto as he turned to see both Colin and Lelich entering into the tent behind him. The Nyasen, Colin-chan. Greeting Nunley as her brother moved over to greet her, Colin offered a small wave as she moved over to one of the seats near where Kurama lay, throwing a small smirk towards the sleeping fox as she did. As the siblings began to chat, Naruto allowed his gaze to slowly shift around his eyes, losing focus as his mind recalled how he had come to be beside these people on the happiness of victory. Flashback two years, another battle day another battle, Naruto had begun to wonder how those among their forces had managed to hold on to their sanity with this being their norm. Every time they moved from one land to the next all that met them was more of the same, small villages held in fear, ravaging bands of soldiers, the occasional crazed chakra warrior, second verse same as the first. Sighing Naruto turned from the most recent battlefield moving over to where CC was finishing a small meeting. As Naruto approached he spotted an odd sight before him. What appeared to be four teens not much older than himself, one obviously older than him, and one young enough to not even come to his waist, were all seated before CC, who seemed to be contemplating what to do with them. Oh Naruto, good timing. 
called CC as he stepped forwards looking from her to the four figures who looked just as puzzled to see him there clad in his crimson armor. These are the children of the last lord we faced in combat, Charles B. Britannia. Spoke CC raising a hand to indicate the figures across from her as Naruto nodded looking around them from the stern purple-haired girl who was seated at their center, keeping an eye on the younger siblings, particularly the pink and blonde-haired girls that sat beside the only male who was now fixing Naruto with a contemplating look. Okay, but why are they here? I mean we just kind of overthrew their father, we aren't going to use them as prisoners are we? Asked the blonde noticing as he spoke that the male and eldest girl moved closer to their siblings sheltering them between them, even as CC sighed, shaking her head. No, nothing like that, in fact the three have requested the chance to join us if you will believe it. Remarked CC as Naruto turned to her blinking before he reached up to pull off his helm, allowing his golden locks and whisker cheeks to show for the first time. Really? Asked Naruto brightly as he turned back to face the four, a wide smile plastered across his face as he looked at them. That's great, you're going to help us save the West. Smiled Naruto the bluntness of his question catching the more protective siblings off guard, even as the younger two looked up to the smiling boy nodding slightly at his welcoming expression. From across the table CC let out a sigh rubbing her forehead lightly as she looked at the blonde teen with an exasperated look. Honestly you just say yes without even wanting to know more. Asked CC causing Naruto to look slightly embarrassed as he raised an armored hand up to scratch lightly at the back of his head. Oh right he, sorry. So why do you guys want to join? Asked Naruto turning to the four, the eldest turning her gaze from her siblings to Naruto, her eyes meeting his unwavering. Because, unlike our father neither my brother nor I wish to see our sisters turning into living weapons just for someone's ambition. Spoke the purple-haired woman as Naruto blinked at her before shifting his gaze to the younger girls, both of whom looked slightly nervous at his gaze. So you two are chakra wielders, huh? I guess that makes sense, so what can you do? Asked Naruto as both girls looked down, not meeting his eyes as the only male met Naruto's eyes. What they can do doesn't matter, they don't want to fight. My sister Cornelia and I will join you and fight for you, but we want them kept out of it. Spoke the purple-eyed youth in a tone of authority that caused Naruto to quirk an eyebrow up. Huh? But why, if you want to help stop the war, wouldn't it be better to use what you had? Asked Naruto as the teen's eyes narrowed. Before he could reply to Naruto the youngest girl shifted to lay a hand gently upon her brothers looking up at Naruto, her young face simply radiating innocence as she spoke up, her voice soft but shaky all the same. Ifimi and I aren't fighters because she heals people. Whispered the girl as Naruto turned his eyes to the pink-haired girl who nodded slightly. And you? Asked CC watching as the blonde girl shuddered slightly under her gaze. As she was about to answer her brother moved, drawing all eyes to him. Lelich? Started Cornelia as the teen shook his head focusing back on CC and Naruto as he spoke. Nunnally's power is too horrible to use. You remember the Battle of Kabato? Asked Lelich as both CC and Naruto nodded. It was legend that some enemy had been nearly wiped off the map completely, the entire village of Kabato reduced to nothing but scarred landscape, as though something had simply scooped it clear of the world leaving nothing behind. As Lelich watched them nod he drew in a heavy breath before continuing. Our nonsense of a father was responsible, he forced Nunley to use her ability by threatening my death. Whispered the teen as both CC and Naruto looked over to the small girl sitting between her siblings, shaking slightly as tears built in her eyes. I'm sorry I didn't want to. She managed as Euphemia leaned in pulling her clothes, even as CC and Naruto looked at one another for a few moments. Very well then, you have my word that I will not force either Nunley or Euphemia into our forces. For now I'll have someone escort you back into the camp. Colin. Called CC as a red-haired figure moved up around Naruto's own age, giving the group a quick look over as she turned to CC. You boss. Called the girl informally as Naruto chuckled. Colin had joined up after the last village they had liberated. Something of a natural in the art of combat, but lacking a few of the social graces she had worked her way up the ranking rather quickly and found herself sparring with Naruto more often than not nowadays. Please escort them into the camp and find them quarters. Called the woman as Colin threw up a small salute moving over to the group. Well come on, we haven't got all day. Called the redeed as the group stood, Lilich moved behind Nunley to begin wheeling the girl away, trading annoyed looks with Colin as he did. As the five departed CC turned smirking to Naruto. Well, we're just collecting beautiful girls left and right, I better watch out, or my students are going to become deviants. Chuckled the woman as Naruto blushed at her words causing her to laugh as she pushed herself up and moved off into camp, leaving a flustered Naruto behind. Maybe getting yourself a vixen wouldn't be so bad, at least it would be entertaining. Commented Kaiubi as Naruto shook himself. Oh shut up Kurama-sensei called Naruto as he turned back into the camp, the massive fox niggering at his reaction as they moved ahead. 
0-0. As Naruto once again came out of his thoughts he was just in time to see Kurama stretching himself awake, his long tails billowing out behind him as he stretched himself upon the pillows before blinking around at Naruto with a bored expression. Well you're late. Chuckled the fox as it moved over to sit beside Nunley, how to reach over to scratch it, drawing a small purr from the fox. At the same time Naruto curled an eyebrow up at him, adopting a small smirk that Kurama ignored. Nice try, but this feels way too good to be embarrassed about. Oh right there. Called the fox letting out a happy purr as Nunley giggled keeping up her work as Lelich moved over to sit beside Colin. So Naruto, what do you think comes after this? Asked Lelich as Naruto sighed, moving over to take a seat, giving a small shrug as he did. No idea really, I've just been following CC on this, come on this isn't even my homeland. Replied the blonde as Colin scoffed. Oh cut it with that already, if this isn't your home, then what is? Called the repeat as Lelich nodded beside her. I have to agree with Colin on this matter, Naruto, this land owes you a great debt along with CC it's your home now. Spoke the teen as Colin nodded. See, even Mr. No at all can't tell you where you belong. Called Colin getting an annoyed look from the teen as Nunley giggled at the pair's antics. Colin and Lelich had always been like this, at each other over everything. It didn't hurt that Colin was also in charge of getting Lelich into any kind of shape that caused no small amount of tension between the pair. Despite this as much as neither would admit they had grown very protective of one another, Colin eventually volunteered to be the guard of Nunley and Lelich. They're right you big idiot, stop trying to live in the past, you've got enough of a future to worry about. Said Kurama as he moved over swatting a tail against Naruto's armor as he moved past him, drawing a small smile to Naruto's lips. I guess you're right. Replied the blonde teen as the rest of the room grinned at him. After a short time Naruto finally left bidding the three goodbye as Kurama moved beside him, the pair heading out into the camp once again, getting a few waves and more than one soldier tossing Kurama a leg of rabbit as they passed. As the pair reached the edge of the camp they found themselves on the edge of a hillside looking out over the side of hundreds of campfires all glinting in the moonlight. Thousands of men and women, finally ready to be free stretching as far as his eyes could see. As Naruto came to a halt, Kurama stopping beside him as he idly chewed on a small bone, looked out as well, chuckling softly to himself. Have to give you and that CC credit, you make one heck of an army. Chuckled the fox as Naruto gave him a small grin. Hey, you couldn't have done it without Kurama-sensei. Called Naruto as the fox puffed out its chest. Of course not, I'm the great Kaiubi no Kitsune. Called the fox as Naruto found himself chuckling. Yep. Chuckled the blonde as he allowed his mind to flash to the events just a year previously, when Kurama had first found himself free of Naruto. Flashed back one year, Naruto had come back from the most recent battle a little worse for wear, a chakra wielder using flames, had managed to catch him off guard while he was busy dealing with his escort. The first blast hadn't made it past his armor, but the subsequent flow of pure fire had managed to slag most of the outer layer. Before things could get worse for him, Naruto had thrown caution to the wind rushing forwards right into the flames, pushing through to bury a sword into the figure cutting off the flame, but not before it had managed to punch a hole in his armor, allowing the flames to lick at his unprotected chest. Lying in the infirmary Naruto groaned as above him Yefimiya moved her hands quickly over his wounds, a steady stream of gentle blue chakra flowed down from her palms seeping into his wounds, causing the skin to stitch itself together, as if by its own accord. Naruto-kun what were you thinking? called the pink-haired girl small tears pulling in her eyes as she looked down at the whiskered youth who gave her a small pain smile. Wasn't. He managed as Euphemia shot him an irritated look. How many times does CCI have to tell you, chakra users are dangerous, they aren't like the East. You can't fight them in their element, you have to work around them. Lectured the girl as Naruto groaned. She's right you know, these people aren't like shinobi, they're one-trick ponies, but monsters all the same. Kind of reminds me of my siblings. Remarked Kurama as Naruto gave a mental sigh. You I know, but figuring out a way around them in the heat of battle isn't easy. I mean come on how was I supposed to know he was a flame wielder? Thought Naruto was the fox chuffed. Was the massive towers of flame not a dead giveaway? Asked a fox causing Naruto to concede simply allowing Euphemia to complete her work. Hirama was right after all, the west may lack all the tricks of the shinobi world, but one thing they had was power, just take Euphemia here, probably couldn't beat a genin and fight, but give her a patient, and she put even Tsune to shame when it came to healing. As Naruto was considering this a small pang drew his attention back to his stomach, as an odd tingling slowly spread across him. What the? Hey Kurama what is that? Kurama. Hey Kurama. Called Naruto inside his head only to be greeted with silence. Just as Naruto was becoming worried he felt an odd tugging sensation looking down to see Euphemia letting out a small start as something reddish-orange slowly pushed itself out of Naruto's now-healed stomach before flopping over onto the ground beside his bed. Both teens stared dumbstruck as the thing whatever it was stirred several bits of its moving around slowly as a familiar tone issued from it. Ah what the heck hit me? 
muttered the thing slowly rising and turning to face the two who blinked down at it, shock written clearly across each of their faces. What they were looking at was well for Naruto at least, unmistakable. A mini Kurama was looking at him looking just as confused as him at his new perspective. For a few moments none of the three moved before Euphemia let out a small noise, drawing both Naruto's and Kurama's eyes around, to see her eyes sparkling like Christmas had come a day early. Awe! Called the pink-haired girl excitedly scooping up the fox much to its irritation as Naruto just watched the event play out completely lost as to what he was seeing. It had taken them a while to figure out just what had happened to the fox. From what they could figure, given Euphemia's abilities for healing, she had just accidentally completed her work a little too well, in healing not only Naruto but Kurama as well. The seal it turned out was not meant to contain the full Kaiubi, and so instead of simply breaking, it had melted away absorbing itself into the fox and allowing the Kurama they now saw to plop out fully formed once again. However, thanks to the seal he was still linked with Naruto, half of his chakra still contained within the team. Still with nowhere else to go, and having, despite himself, grown rather fond of the boy he had decided to stay and just see how this war played out. Besides, getting to tear apart the battlefield every now and then was rather appealing to the chakra fox when he wanted to. Flashback end, on the hilltop Naruto found himself smirking over at Kurama, as his mind recalled everything that had led him to this point. His old life in Konoha, the betrayal, his rescue by CC, the battles and battles following that, and now here he was. Here at last it was coming to an end. So Kurama, what are you going to do once this war's over? Asked Naruto looking down at the fox who gave him an are you serious look before letting out a snort looking away. Not a chance, I'm not going anywhere. CC I'm right about one thing. A lifetime of relaxation and rabbit is my future, and don't you forget it. I'm not going anywhere while that's on the table. Replied the fox smirking slightly as Naruto nodded. I, I suppose not thanks to Furball. Finished Naruto as the fox gave him a small look shaking his head. No problem with the meat bag. Zero zero. As dawn rose the next day the first rays stretched slowly across the great plains of the Western Empire, banishing shadows as it raced across the wide expanse. In its course the new warmth fell upon the still figures lining the fields. The light catching off of the metal of their armor sending flashes of light back into the sky. Thousands of them stood upon the field, the dew of the morning hanging from a few of their helms or dripping from the ends of their sheaths now barren of their blades. Their armor shining a vibrant charcoal, even as a few dotted notes of white were spaced among them sporting heavier armor than their fellows, along with what appeared to be folded wings like the golden gliders of the Air Force. At the head of the force stood a line of heavily armored figures carrying towering shields of iron and steel, inscribed with a tapestry of seals, all glowing faintly in the new day sun. From these ranks three figures stepped forwards each dressed in full battle gear, their figures striking a startling impression beside the massive force arrayed behind them. At the head of the three was Naruto, his red helm turning to look down the line, as the fox plum waved out behind him in the steady breeze of the day. Behind him stood the armored form of Cornelia, her rich purple and black armor setting her apart, as her own armored helm turned scanning the field, her eyes flashing from behind the crossed visor, as the points of her helm struck out on either side, giving her the impression of some kind of ancient demon of the battlefield. Across from Cornelia stood the final figure, her own helm fixed forward shifting slightly as an audible popping came from her neck. Colin blazing blue eyes tracing past the smooth gray face mask of her armor as it looked around, the large gray clawed gauntlets flexing slightly as she looked across at the gathering forces. So I guess they don't wish to surrender. Called Colin looking over to Cornelia as she hefted up a massive golden lance in one hand, drawing a blade similar to CCS with her mother. Then they are fools, we haven't come this far to let such as them stand in our way. Called the woman as she turned to see Naruto's armored hands reaching up to grasp the hilt of his own blade, yanking it free to point out towards the forces now massing before them. No we haven't, today we end this. Called Naruto as with a pulse of chakra the metal of his blade sprang forwards, extending into an elegant yet massive blade, standing nearly the man's full height. As Naruto readied his blade from a ways off a massive roar coated the battlefield as the full monstrosity that was the Kaiubi stepped forwards, its tails waving into the air, even as it let out another earth-shaking roar. Instead of causing fear among the forces around it the men and women instead raised their own voices in cheers and roars of their own. As the coal went up armored figures leveled kunai cannons, a few drawing blades of their own to complement the launchers, each pointing forwards towards the last remnants of resistance to their dream. Well can't have Karama showing me up. Called Naruto as his hands fell into a familiar sign. With a blast the area before the army was suddenly full of identical red armored Naruto's, each brandishing a blade, their foxtails waving like the tails of the massive fox himself as they all raised their blades, their voices calling out in a roar of their own as they charged. As soon as the red sea of armored figures started Kurama let out another roar, as blasts of black and chakra began to fly forwards towards the enemy ranks, even as Cornelia, Colin and the rest of the army rushed forwards following after Naruto's lead. 
From above the battlefield CC stood watching as the boy she had saved from the desert led the final charge, his forces following him happily as beside her Euphemia and Nunnally watched their faces showing both concern and pride at what they witnessed. Behind them Lelich also watched smiling slightly as he watched the forces moving after his friend. The observers saw the enemy troops lowering their own launchers as a rattling of fire began to fill the air, even over the din of the charging forces, hundreds of the red Naruto's disappearing into clouds of smoke, even as still more continued forwards closing ground. Then they were among each other as the full brunt of their forces crashed into them. As Naruto reached the line his first swipe took three enemies with it drawing a cry from their fellows as they spun to levy their cannons upon the armored figure. Before they could manage it, Naruto was already pushing forwards his blade cutting a furrow in the ground as he raced ahead, his free hand flashing out as a wave of kunai flew out catching more gunners as the blonde cut his way still deeper into the enemy ranks. But the heave Naruto brought his blade around once again catching another figure full in the chest as the whistling wind chakra swirling around the blade allowed it to cleave clear through the man in one swing like cannon fire. Before that body could even fall the red-clad blonde had allowed the swing to pull him around as his free hand rose to show a swirling ball of deep red chakra forming in it. As he came to face into the heart of the enemy again, his hand shot forwards the black orb buckling for a moment before blasting out caving its way through the forces till it exploded into a plume of fire, sending enemies scattering even as the first of Naruto's forces passed him by. Looking ahead Naruto saw as Colin flung herself into a group of gunners who had managed to take down a few of their forces, her claws dancing out as cutting into the enemy forces, sending trails of crimson up from each impact. As the gunners fell from their ranks came a massive armored figure barreling down on the smaller Colin who swung to meet the target. As the figure reached her the redeed threw herself forwards under the massive swipe of an axe, her hand slamming into the armored chest, doing little more than denting it, drawing a cry of victory from the armored figure as he drew back a hand to crush her. The celebration ended as Colin triggered the seals upon her palms, as a wave of burning metal sprang free of the storage seal, rocketing forwards like a molten lance into the man's chest, causing him to howl in pain, as his armor distorted from the wound a moment before he fell back dead. On her other side Cornelia was also feeling forces one after another, her sword flicking out between the enemies cutting them as though they were but grass. As Naruto watched the purple armored maiden took a blast of kunai fire that sent her blade flying free from her hand. This, however, proved to be little more than a distraction, as with a jerk Cornelia's golden lance shot forward spearing another gunner before she closed in ripping the cannon free from the figure's grip to spray a line of fire into his fellows, even as with a jerk, she dislodged her lance pointing forwards, as around her armored figures rushed forwards into the fray. But Naruto his gaze shifted forwards to where he saw the commander's group, starting to pull back from the fray. No this ends here roared Naruto as he flung himself forward swiping a hand forwards sending another soldier flying back his armored chest caved in, even as Naruto pushed forwards towards the retreating force. But even as he felled two more soldiers he could already see that he would not reach them in time. They were going to escape. Or so it seemed before the towering form of Kurama smashed into the rear of their forces, his massive tails lashing out sending figures flying and causing the commander's guards to halt recoiling from the creature's assault. That momentary pause was all Naruto needed as he pushed himself past the final line, grasping his bladed in both hands, as Chakra swirled around him, seeming to bleed off of his armor like an actual cloak that billowed out behind him, making him appear as though a second crimson beast upon the battlefield. As the Lord turned back towards the forces it was just in time to see the crimson armored figure leap the Chakra billowing out behind him in a mix of crimson and blue waves like some massive cape, even as his blade rose above him. As the blade fell cries began to spread as the enemy forces began to fling down their arms fleeing from the onslaught or simply dropping down hands raised in surrender, praying to receive mercy. At the same time Colin and Cornelia pushed through the line, skipping to a halt as the sight before them opened up. Standing in an open patch was Naruto, his chakra cloak swirling around him waving gently as his armored form turned towards them, his blade clutched in one hand, the bodies of his final enemy at his feet along with his guard. As the two watched behind where Naruto stood Kurama rose his tails waving out like Naruto's own plum in the morning light as he let out a triumphant roar the soldiers following suit as they cheered the end of their war. The end of lives of fear and the birth of the United Empire. As Naruto turned to face the pair he allowed the chakra to slip away from him, the cloak shimmering before fading as he stepped forwards, his blade shrinking as he slung it onto his back, looking between the pair as he approached. So it's over. Managed Naruto, his voice a little stunned as he looked around at the forces as they flung down their arms in defeat. Across from him Colin shrugged as she replied. I suppose now what? Her words caused Cornelia to look between the two before letting out a sigh. Honestly, do I have to do everything? Gather the medics, prisoners are to be disarmed, someone get me a status report. Called the woman turning from the pair and marching back to the forces, as several snapped out salutes before rushing to obey her, even as cheers continued to ring out around them. 
Really, you think she could manage to be happy? Muttered Colin looked over to Naruto who let out a small chuckle that soon grew into a deep laugh that carried across the battlefield. After all, he'd now gone from a boy banished from his home to a soldier that helped to unite a nation. In all his years dreaming in Konoha, he could never have imagined something even close to as amazing as what he now felt. So he stood there for a time just marveling at what his life had brought him. Till Cornelia yelled at him to shut it and get back to work at any rate. Zero, 0 Following the final battle the United Forces returned to the capital city, once abandoned but now brimming with new life. It had been captured by their forces years previously and had finally been restored to its previous glory that surpasses even the combined capitals of the East in its magnificence. Everywhere one looked there was celebration as people celebrated their loved one's return or toasted those lost, all to bring the freedom from conflict they had so long fought for. In the heart of the city stood the pillared palace fully restored to its previous majesty, its walls rising up over lush gardens and buildings, guards standing at attention here and there, armor gleaming white with crimson slashes in honor of their leader victory. Behind the massive walls through the pillared arcades and inside the massive throne room, its walls covered in hanging tapestries, a rather amusing argument was taking place among a group, standing inside the entrance hall, upon the wide marble floors. What? No, you do it. It was your idea. Called Naruto pointed towards CC who waved him off. Not a chance, told you I'm retiring, I'm thinking of just setting up shop at the local hot springs or maybe buy a restaurant as well that sounds nice. Spoke the woman as Naruto turned to his fellow companions. What about you, Euphemia? Nunnally. Asked Naruto a note of pleading in his voice, as both women gave him small smiles shaking their heads. Sorry Naruto-kun, but we have other responsibilities. Spoke the pair as Naruto narrowed his eyes. Playing with Kurama and spoiling him are not responsibilities. The hell they aren't, that's important work. Called the fox drawing a few giggles from the princesses as Lelich stepped forwards. I suppose I he started before Colin moved up grabbing his ear and dragging him back. Oh no you don't, you become leader and you'll get assassinated by a stiff breeze, toothpick. Called Colin, causing Lelich to glare at her while the others chuckled. Cornelia stepped forwards to stand before Naruto, giving him a stern look. Just face it Naruto, you are the only choice, the people love you, the soldiers respect you, and would follow you into hell itself if you asked, we saved this land, and now it's time to keep it that way so shut up and do the job. Finished the woman as Naruto looked at her, his gaze slowly shifting to each of the figures in turn, all offering small smiles or nods till finally Naruto let out a heavy sigh. I don't get a choice in this do I? Asked the blonde across from him CC shook her head. Nope, remember you owe me one, consider this payment, I saved you, and now you look after my home, I think that's fair enough. Spoke the woman as Naruto turned to her his own lips turning up in a small smile. You planned this didn't you? He asked as CC shrugged. Maybe, I prefer to think of it as betting my future on you, and you haven't disappointed me Naruto. Replied the woman as Naruto nodded. Well I guess I can't start now. He replied, turning so that he faced the group as a whole. Alright, I will become emperor of the United West, dot but you better stay to help. Finished the blonde as those near him nodded. Soon enough the word spread as the lands united in celebration at the beginning of the reign of the Crimson Emperor of the West, 